this episode. All right, this is step three, I wanna say, step three. So you take your donor engine out of the donor car and you bring it over here to your garage. Oh shit, it's cramped in here. So now you have your engine and transmission and drive shaft somewhere over there. You're going to need to, I don't know what they call it, a uh, standalone harness. You're going to stand alone the harness. Basically, you're going to strip the harness of all the wiring you no longer want or need. Meaning, all the wiring that went to the headlights and the other crap, the wiring that goes to the secondary O2 sensors after the cats, because we're going to be cutting the cats off and telling the computer, which I've already done, with the HP tuners that we're only going to be using the front O2, which is somewhere up down there. So there will be an O2 here, and on the other side there will be an O2 there as well. So we still get engine management through the computer. It can tell that this bank is running rich or lean and adjust accordingly. Those O2s are just to tell the computer that it is still complying with the EPA and has a working catalytic converter so that when your cat starts getting clogged, that O2 starts telling the computer, hey, trip the dash light. So then you know you need to replace your cat so that you can continue to catalyze unburnt gas and fuel emissions efficiently, blah, blah, blah. We're not doing that. I'm also going to pull the transmission, which it's an automatic, so it's going to require removing the starter. Then I can remove the bolts through that hole where the starter would be that hold the flex plate to the torque converter. And then unbolt all the bolts around the outside of the transmission bell housing and the transmission will come apart. And then I can change the rear main seal because why not? I do not want to put this in and then have a huge rear main seal leak just pissing oil everywhere. Yes, it only has like 96,000 miles, but it is 21 years old. And anybody that knows anything about rubber knows that it's not a miles thing, it's a time thing. Eventually, over time, especially being soaked in oil, rubber is going to degrade and fall apart and contract and start leaking. So why risk it? It's literally like a $7, $20 tops gasket kit. We pull this apart, we put the new gasket in, we put it back together, and then we're good to go. As I was saying, fucking distracted, ADHD, whatever. We're gonna remove all the stuff, like the exhaust gas recirculation system, we're gonna remove that. So all the wiring that went to that, that can be pulled out of the harness. All the wiring that went back through the firewall to the body control module that told, yeah, all that stuff can be removed. LT1swap.com, I'll put it in the description below, has a specific wiring pinout diagram of these connectors right here for every year that you can get an LS out of, or at least the ones I care about. And it'll tell you when you open this up, It'll tell you, you know, this is pin one all the way to 44 and then 45 to 100 or whatever on each connector. It'll tell you that wire is yellow. You can pull it out. It's for this. Or you, and you just go down the chart, literally one wire at a time, and it's going to say, this wire is needed. Do not remove it. This wire is for that. Don't remove it. That wire is the ignition. That wire is this. That wire is that. And what you're basically looking for is anything it says you can remove that you're not going to use. That's also an important key. If you're going to use AC, then don't delete the AC. If you're going to use whatever, if you're going to use it, don't delete it. But as you're going down that list, if you have no intention of ever using it, you might as well just delete it from the the wiring harness. You can leave it in and use it later if you want, but I just delete it. Then once you've pulled the pins out of here and you've removed all the wires that you don't need, you can then open up this harness. I would leave it on the, the motor. That way you never lose the shape of the harness, but you can pull all this stuff off and rewrap it back up later. Pull all the wires out though. R rip them all the way out. If, it, if you're not using it, rip it out, pull it all the way out of the harness. Then when you have the harness standalone, which will it'll tell you this is a ground this is a ground this is ground you'll tie all those grounds together to one ground wire it'll tell you this is a constant power wire this is a constant power you tie all those together and you just connect those right to your battery and then the other wires well, i think they're pink those are the accessory meaning you that's what's turning on the system so all those wires will get twisted together and that will go to your key so when your key is on everything's powered up you're ready to fire all you got to do is hit a start button the starter will kick over it's gonna run 
It's so simple. It's literally Legos, but a motor. That's the next step. So stay tuned, like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, keep on modding.